Millions in Syria and Iraq are facing water shortages as the region's longest river, the Euphrates, dries up. The mysterious drying of the Euphrates River has revealed a secret cave bursting with odd species, ghostly sounds, and old passageways. Could this be the fulfillment of an end-time prophecy? when the water recedes and exposes startling relics linking our history to a projected future? How did this mysterious cave come to be, and what secrets are hidden there? Come explore with us the disturbing finds under the Euphrates. Scientists, historians, and religious organizations have all become interested in the vast Euphrates River's slow drying up. This has led to debates that mix natural history with prehistoric predictions. Along with worries about water scarcity, this big environmental shift has also revealed long-kept mysteries beneath the river's surface. Many enigmatic caverns that provide a window into a world long hidden have been found in the Kurdistan area of Iraq as the riverbed gradually comes into view. Many conjectures and discussions have been sparked by the finding of these caverns among archaeologists, historians, Bible scholars, Islamic authorities, and the general public. Some people only consider these facts to be historical, but others think they might have deeper spiritual or prophetic meanings. The Euphrates River has great theological significance in both Islam and Christianity, and its drying up is sometimes connected to apocalyptic prophecies. For example, according to Islamic tradition, a hadith from Sahih Muslim states that conflicts and battles will result from the Euphrates drying up and revealing gold wealth. Similar to this, the Book of Revelation in Christian eschatology refers to the Euphrates drying up as a sign of the end times. These prophecies have given the most recent archaeological finds an air of mystery and intrigue that has sparked a great deal of discussion and conjecture. Archaeologists are fascinated by the caves under the Euphrates and are working hard to learn more about their historical significance. There are many unanswered concerns regarding the function and origins of these tunnel-connected caverns. Certain experts propose that the caves could have functioned as dwellings, repositories, or even places of worship for prehistoric societies that flourished by the rivers. Others, however, suggest that because the caves are flooded, they might have served as jails or prisons. Since it would make sense to isolate inmates in a place this far away and difficult to access, the theory that these caves were utilized for detention is persuasive. This notion is consistent with past practices that frequently employed hard-to-reach locations to detain people. All of the theories put out have not been able to provide solid proof for any one interpretation. The exact origin and purpose of the caverns remain a mystery, despite continuous investigations aimed at providing light on this intriguing discovery. All that is certain, though, is that these caverns are an important archaeological discovery that may fundamentally alter our perception of the prehistoric societies who formerly called this area home. The rich banks of the Euphrates River have long been considered the cradle of human civilization, supporting the development of some of the first societies in history, such as the Sumerians, Akkadians, Babylonians, and Assyrians. The rich history connected to the river is further enhanced by the finding of these caverns. Apart from the caverns, the evaporation of the Euphrates has resulted in the reappearance of a vanished city that was supposedly founded between 1475 and 1275 BC. Under the Mitanni Empire, this ancient city, possibly the long-lost Zakiku, was a bustling center of activity. The city has been around for more than 3,400 years, during which it has experienced phases of Sumerian, Assyrian, Greek, Byzantine, and Islamic history. This city was a powerful force in its heyday, encompassing a large territory and exerting a substantial influence on the power relations in the region at that time. But the prosperity of the city was short-lived since wars with surrounding empires, most notably the Assyrian and Egyptian empires, caused its destruction. The end seemed near for this once glorious metropolis, especially with the rise of the Assyrian Empire. Its grandeur was finally lost to time and abandonment until the Euphrates River engulfed it. The city was lost to history for ages, lying beneath the river. Archaeologists have methodically studied every relic, building, and geological aspect of Zakiku. Every find has deepened our knowledge of the customs, social structures, and financial systems of this once rich society. The objects have created a window into the daily life of the Zakiku people, 
exposing specifics on their vocations, social structure, and practices. The religious writings and songs that can be discovered around the city shed light on the Zakiku people's beliefs and practices of worship. In addition, images and sculptures representing important historical events, folklore, and elements of everyday life have been discovered by archaeologists. These creative creations are evidence of Zakiku's inventiveness and rich cultural traditions. Through examining these relics, scholars have been able to establish links between the people who lived in the ancient city and other cultures which has allowed them to comprehend their artistic legacy and styles of expression better. Findings made within Zakiku's old walls are windows into a colorful, intriguing past rather than merely historical relics. Broken ceramics, tools, and personal belongings have revealed a wealth of information about the Zakiku people's trades, technology, and way of life. These relics provide a thorough insight into the daily routines and technological innovations of the civilization. The architectural prowess of Zakiku has also been made evident by the excavations there. The buildings and structures that have been discovered demonstrate excellent urban planning skills and cutting-edge construction methods. This creative use of architecture highlights the city's significance as a regional center of culture and commerce. Moreover, a great deal about the economy of Zakiku has been uncovered by studying its remnants. Trade evidence with surrounding regions points to Zakiku as a major commercial hub. The finding of a variety of objects, including luxury goods, tools, and pottery, suggests that the city had a vibrant economy with a wide range of goods and services. The city's proximity to the Euphrates River enhances its significance and provides a more comprehensive understanding of its past, as it did for other riverfront cities. The river provided them with a lifeline by providing water for irrigation and rich soil that supported an abundance of crops. Their vibrant agricultural community promoted a diversified cultural and social fabric while bolstering the city's economy. Clay jars containing cuneiform tablets that describe their daily activities were among the other intriguing discoveries. Seal imprints were found on a few of these tablets, one of which was connected to a notable figure from the adjacent town of Turka. Examining this find, his life, and the society of that era, roughly the 18th century, closely revealed a history of affluent people's lifestyles and the issues that common people faced. But keep in mind that none of these theories have any hard evidence to support them yet. Instead, they are all merely theories. Regardless of the validity of these theories, individuals won't give up until they discover the solution. Others, however, have proposed that the caves may have been used for ritualistic or religious purposes, acting as private areas for ceremonies or introspection. Another hypothesis is that the caverns may have served as hiding places or shelters for people in the area during times of violence or turmoil, offering them safety and security. Understandably, this idea was made given that we discussed the conflict with the Assyrian and Egyptian civilizations. There is still no clear explanation for the nature and purpose of the caverns, despite the many possibilities that have been proposed. But as time goes on and more information is uncovered, archaeologists and historians might be able to piece together the riddle and provide a fuller picture of how the people who originally inhabited the Euphrates River used these mysterious tunnels. Understanding their purpose would help us to understand a great lot about the daily life and cultural activities of these past societies. However, the Euphrates River is Southwest Asia's largest waterway. Even if you're unaware of it, the rivers, lakes, streams, and other bodies of water in your area are probably vital to your community, unless you live in a desert or some dry land. The greatest river in Southwest Asia is without a doubt the Euphrates River. Like many other rivers, it is essential to the cultures and development of the area. Religion-wise, the Euphrates has been around since the dawn of time, beginning around 4000 BC to aid in the growth and development of Middle Eastern communities. Mesopotamia and Sumer were the first of these settlements, and subsequently, Babylon and Assyria joined them. One of the two main rivers in the area, the other being the River Tigris, which aided in the development of the Mesopotamian Empire, is the Euphrates. Because rivers were essential for survival and development in the past, historical accounts frequently show the emergence of settlements around rivers. Rivers were first primarily used to supply food and water to incoming settlers, meaning that their use was fairly limited. When they were employed for transportation, trade, and farming though, their usage started to rise. Middle Eastern large cities still rely on the Euphrates and Tigris rivers as their primary water sources. The headwaters of the Euphrates River are located in Turkey, and it flows through the contemporary nations of Syria and Iraq. Neither a historical culture nor any modern nation has ever had a border provided by the river. It does, however, appear in the Christian Bible as one of the boundaries of Canaan, the Promised Land. The Middle East has grown significantly 
because of the river's wide path across the region. About a hundred miles from the Gulf of Persia, the river enters the Tigris. It would not be an exaggeration to argue that rivers were essential to the existence of the first agricultural societies in human history. While rivers are certainly still very important to current communities, they were also vital to those societies. It should therefore come as no surprise that the earliest human civilizations were frequently established beside large rivers. The main river valley that supported the rise of the ancient civilizations of Sumer and Mesopotamia is located in what is now known as the Middle East, and it is formed by the powerful Euphrates River and its sister channel, the Tigris, unsettling noises and unsettling tunnels from the Euphrates. After learning about the origins and nature of the Euphrates, Let's examine some of the most horrifying events that have occurred there. It turns out that art and caves are not the only things being discovered as the Euphrates River becomes even smaller. More fascinating finds including underwater subterranean passages have been made. Among their amazing qualities are well-built tunnels that make one wonder who created those stairs. The walls of these tunnels still hold great strength and are quite remarkably well done. There are tunnels like these in several old stories. Some stories align with historical written documents that link the enigmatic tunnels to certain individuals. They are associated with Semiramis, a legendary queen who unites mythology and reality. There are theories that the tunnels are used to hold angels captive based on Christian beliefs. Eventually, they would be let loose at a scheduled moment to exterminate one third of the global populace. However, with the discovery of the ancient literature linking the tunnels as the way Babylon was connected to Mesopotamia, many quickly challenged all these ideas. There are still many unanswered questions concerning the past that are brought up by the tunnels. However, another strange event started to occur at the same time as people were attempting to decipher the purpose of the tunnels. Unusual noises began emanating from one of the cave's passages. This kind of thing would give someone the creeps. Imagine discovering unusual noises in the vicinity of a location that has been deserted for thousands of years. They chose to look into it because they were already there. However, what they discovered was wholly unanticipated and just out of the ordinary, which is why the cave was sealed. There are tunnels like these in several old stories. Some stories align with historical written documents that link the enigmatic tunnels to certain individuals. They are associated with Semiramis a legendary queen who unites mythology and reality. There are theories that the tunnels are used to hold angels captive based on Christian beliefs. Eventually, they would be let loose at a scheduled moment to exterminate one third of the global populace. However, with the discovery of the ancient literature linking the tunnels as the way Babylon was connected to Mesopotamia, many quickly challenged all these ideas. There are still many unanswered questions concerning the past that are brought up by the tunnels. However, Another strange event started to occur at the same time as people were attempting to decipher the purpose of the tunnels. Unusual noises began emanating from one of the cave's passages. This kind of thing would give someone the creeps. Imagine discovering unusual noises in the vicinity of a location that has been deserted for thousands of years. They chose to look into it because they were already there. However, what they discovered was wholly unanticipated and just out of the ordinary which is why the cave was sealed. Following their study, the archaeologists discovered an odd-looking underground monster with a tongue that resembled a snake and a pretty large mouth. Though there were some theories, no one was able to identify what it was, therefore the cave was promptly sealed off. There are a lot of theories on the true nature of the creature, which has been the subject of numerous guesses. Some people think it is just a fish, while others think it is a reptile. The weird sounds are thought to be caused by the strange creature, but there may be harmful objects concealed in the tunnel that are not yet known. The Euphrates River is disclosing things underwater, even though it is still going through its typical dry spells. Is it possible for you to envision a manufacturing located underwater? Inside the ancient city, history enthusiasts have unearthed even more amazing finds. One such find is a well-kept factory surrounded by towering walls and walls. Despite being so old and immersed below, the factory has surprisingly kept up admirably, as if it had been standing unmodified on stable ground for a very long time. The tall factory building was used by the people who lived there to store valuables there. To the structure, which has walls composed of dried mud and dates back more than 3,000 years, is still sturdy despite damage from an earthquake that occurred in 1350 BC. It is thought that because the upper portions of the walls are collapsing, 
the lower portions may not have been harmed by water. Further investigation turned up even more incredible findings. Bao, how wonderful. We are discussing pots below the surface. There were discovered five clay pots containing almost a hundred cuneiform tablets. A portion of the tablets were still covered in clay, providing us with an extremely secure window into the past and present of the citizens of the city. These ancient clay tablets reveal things to us that we would not otherwise know, much like time machines. A historic fortification, which probably played a vital part in the defense and control of the area during times of strife, is another noteworthy discovery unearthed in the city. The fortress's strategic location and architectural design can reveal important details about the military strategies and equipment employed by the prehistoric people who previously called the region home. Although the Euphrates River was important for the maintenance of civilizations, it was arguably more important for the emergence of civilization, particularly in the Fertile Crescent. The early farming tribes used this crescent-shaped nursery, which laid the groundwork for later farming civilizations. Between the two major rivers, the Tigris and the Euphrates, is the Fertile Crescent. The concept of farming was brought by this Fertile Crescent, which stretched from the Persian Gulf to the Mediterranean Sea. Farming is essential to human survival today. The reason the ancient Mesopotamians cherished this country was the yearly flooding caused by the river, which brought rich, silty soil ideal for agriculture cultivation. However, these floods also brought about issues, eradicating entire settlements and drying out the area beyond the rivers. But the astute Sumerians of ancient Mesopotamia didn't allow these obstacles to deter them. During drought spells, they employed clever farming methods, including irrigation, and the construction of canals to transport water from nearby rivers to distant farms. Additionally, they created the plow, which facilitated seed planting. These advancements allowed them to have more food, which increased their population. The first towns, like the 40,000-person Uruk, began to form approximately 3,000 BC. These towns developed into bustling trade hubs, where surplus wool and grain were traded for metal, stone, and timber. The driest part of the Euphrates River reveals the ruins of ancient civilizations like Babylon. Similar to dwellings, these archaeological remnants provide us with an insight into the way the Babylonians lived along the river. The tale of Mesopotamia and the Fertile Crescent demonstrates how people can overcome obstacles and come up with clever solutions. The rivers that previously shaped these civilizations are now filling in the blanks and completing the story of this site where human civilization first began. They are teaching us more about our distant past. The river will soon run dry entirely. According to a 2021 assessment by the Iraqi Ministry of Water Resources, the Euphrates River may completely dry up by 2040. This is a result of both extended droughts, like the one that shook the nation in 2918 and climate change. The Euphrates River, which was formerly vital to human civilizations, is progressively shrinking demonstrating the significance of water to the local populace. The Euphrates River was once extremely important. The Babylonian Empire recognized the value of water a long time ago. For their success, they ruled it from the Euphrates. They used the river as a waterway, and everything appeared to be going well for them. Of course, that was only the case for a short period, as things soon became more difficult. When multiple nations had to share the river's water, things became more complicated. Realizing the river's significance, Turkey, Syria, and Iraq all constructed dams for their purposes, which resulted in some major downstream issues. The once large river, which from the shore seemed to go on forever, is now only a small portion of what it once was. Places downstream, like Iraq, suffered from the construction of the dams, while the upstream continued to develop richer and fatter due to their dams. It became so severe that fights broke out as a result of the growing unhappiness. Iraq even made a threat to destroy the dams to obtain more water. Other major nations had to intervene to mediate and prevent a major crisis from arising. But did the issue then cease? No, it didn't. Without considering how little there was or worrying about what to do if there was none, everyone wants more water. Nobody wants less. Communities are in desperate need of assistance in obtaining even a tiny amount of water as the river shrinks and the land dries up. Iraq and other regions are on the verge of a drought. There are millions of Syrians living along the Euphrates River who are in danger because they have nowhere else to turn for water. Tragically, the great river that once brought life and helped human civilizations flourish 
is now a source of misery and suffering due to the Euphrates' drying up. At this very moment, religion is at the center of almost every big issue in the globe. Like most historical constructions, the Euphrates have some connection to a prophecy. Some of the most crucial Christian and Islamic prophecies are located beyond the river. There is speculation among some individuals that the Euphrates River drying up is proof of predictions in Islamic teachings. These beliefs state that the Euphrates will eventually dry up, and that when it does, a mountain of gold concealed beneath its water will be exposed. This prediction derives from accounts passed down to recent generations by Prophet Muhammad in Hadiths. The image of a mountain of gold signifies a lot of money and abundance. As such, it would be no surprise if many believers in the Quran are genuinely looking forward to it. This may be excellent, but while it offers enormous prospects, it might also bring significant issues if it is true and happens. We have learned from earlier experiences that major discoveries of valuable objects led to battles and issues over who acquired what and who owned what. It might screw up how things work economically and provoke tensions between countries. Who knows, it might even start a huge conflict. From a Christian perspective, experts think that the strange caves uncovered within the Euphrates River have been the residence of demons for many ages. This concept is based on a prophecy recorded in the pages of the Bible, which mentions the release of four angels chained in the river Euphrates. In the Bible, there's a part concerning the Euphrates River that concerns when the world is ending. According to the Bible, it is said that an angel would pour something out of a vial on a river, making it dry. And this river is none other than the vast Euphrates. And it looks as if that prophecy is kind of happening now. With the Euphrates River drying up swiftly, it seems like the angel may have already poured forth the material onto the river. The book of Revelation is easily the scariest book of the Bible. While you can discover some scary things in prophetic literature like Daniel and Ezekiel, the book of Revelation talks about considerably more horrific things. It doesn't just say that the river would dry up. It mentions four angels that would be released from the rivers drying up. And at the end times, these angels are going to bring forth a great deal of confusion and trouble, eliminating a sizable population and demolishing a portion of the planet. Some reject Christian doctrine. For those who are not religious, this biblical account may seem passionate or like a wild tale. However, odd occurrences have been reported close to the Euphrates River, leading some to question whether there is any reality to these ancient writings. Whether you agree with these Christian and Muslim prophecies or not, there is no denying that the Euphrates River and the objects unearthed under it have a mysterious relationship to the faiths and beliefs of millions of people worldwide. The end of the world is near. The fact that the end is approaching is nothing new. This has been ringing for a long. Religious authorities have backed up this assertion with quotes from the Book of Revelation. The Euphrates River's drying up and the finding of the enigmatic caves have fueled the flames of these ideas even more. For the most part, though, these interpretations are still theoretical and subject to disagreement. According to biblical prophecy, the Euphrates River will dry up in the final days to make room for the Eastern Kings. Any army trying to advance from east to west would be thwarted by the river, which is a huge geographical barrier. The Euphrates River, which is almost 1,800 miles long and 300 yards broad on average, has historically provided a significant amount of life in the area. In the words of Revelation 16:12, the sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river Euphrates, and its water was dried up to prepare the way for the kings from the east. The precise identity of these kings of the east is not mentioned in the Bible, however, theologians and biblical scholars disagree on this point. The kings of the east are often understood to allude to China's and other Asian countries' ascent to prominence as political and economic powers. His seal appeared on government documents, raising the urgent issue who was this Gimil Ninkarak? An eerie story started to emerge as the group explored the ruins. The ancient city, free from propaganda and political control, mumbled its secrets through clay tablets. These old journals, long since buried and kept, revealed the inhabitants' lives, akin to silent historical confessions. Fourteen tablets among the remnants mentioned Gimil Ninkarak. Discovered inside a stately home, they implied that Gimil was not only an important person, but also may have had connections to the local monarch, Kash Tilashu. However, stories of hopelessness coexisted with tales of wealth and authority. Heartbreaking stories of people like Guatam, a little child caught in the grip of misfortune, were revealed on the tablets. 
Their hardships created a melancholic background for this long-lost, once-thriving ancient world. But when night fell, optimism began to surface. The commitment of two academics, Buccellati and Olivia Ruel, started the process of assembling this historical puzzle. Their painstaking labor offered a clear glimpse into Turka's way of life in the 18th century BCE. These tablets had secrets that went beyond simple historical accounts. They served as reminders of both the resilient nature of the people who lived there and the once great civilization. The murmurs of Gimil Ninkarak and the innumerable others preserved in clay seemed to be reaching out, making sure they would live on despite the unrelenting advance of time. Sometimes, the ferocious might of nature uncovers mysteries that have been kept hidden for millennia in a world where the ruins of the past are buried. These devoted adventurers found hints of the once great metropolis of Zakiku among the barren ruins and broken pieces of history. Stretching an incredible 600 miles from the dark Zagros Mountains to the glittering Mediterranean Sea, this city was the beating heart of the huge Mitanni Empire. These strong and arrogant ancient Mitanni once faced up against the powerful Egyptians in a battle for control of the golden regions of Syria. However, as empires come and go, in 1420 BCE, a ceasefire was made with Pharaoh Thutmose IV. Unfortunately, fate had other ideas for the Mitanni. Under the onslaught of the Hittites and then the tenacious Assyrians, their strength eroded, burying Zakiku's splendors beneath the cover of nature. However, by a strange turn of events, the harsh drought of 2019 revealed still another marvel. The megalithic monument known as the Dolmen of Guadalperal, which had been submerged under the dry soil for 60 years, was revealed in Spain. For the first time in years, the sun was shining on 140 enormous granite blocks, whispering stories from 7,000 years ago. This magnificent building, which is thought to be an old chamber or tomb, is evidence of humanity's enduring search for immortality. However, Guadalperal's appearance is not a singular miracle. At her whim, nature has often raised her veil to unveil long-lost towns and historic wonders. Every find serves as both a window into the past and a sobering reminder of nature's dual function as both preserver and destroyer. Life flourished in this vibrant, old city. The streets hummed with the sound of laughing, children playing, and the far-off buzz of daily life. The unexpected, strong shaking and roaring of the ground overturned the elegant buildings of the city. A huge earthquake devastated the vibrant city, burying it in the rubble and engulfing unrest. However, an unforeseen twist emerged from this disaster. The city's destruction turned into its protector. The lowest parts of the city were covered and protected as the higher walls collapsed. Though it appeared catastrophic at the time, the wreckage ended up serving as a shield against time and the elements, keeping the secrets of the city hidden. As time passed, the previously lively location was covered in sand, and breezes carried the memory of it into the distance. Still, the ruins hidden beneath the layers were a preserved piece of history. The city's hidden treasures were exposed as adventurers removed the layers. Beautiful structures, but also intimate peeks into the lives of those who lived there, such as jewelry, well-made pottery, and shiny coins. Tucked away in its apocalyptic embrace, these objects murmured the tales of an old city that was shattered by an earthquake and was waiting to be discovered. Please feel free to comment below and remember to subscribe and like the video for more great stories.